after we take the whole thing back apart. Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today's video is part three and the final episode of lubing the splines and changing the final drive oil on the Vulcan 750. If you haven't seen parts one and two, there'll be a link up above to get you caught up. Um, and we'll just get straight into it. Uh, we're gonna start by adding lube to the prop shaft and then we're gonna put everything back together. So let's do it. I'm just taking a glove and I'm just packing this grease in here a little bit. And I'm gonna work it around on the threads. All right, we've got it all set. Now we can get the final drive back in. First thing we need to do is line up the prop shaft here. Once we get lined up there, oops, shop mount's in the way. are hand tight uh, so what we're gonna do now is get the torque wrench and torque them down the rest of the way all right 17 and a half is our torque and we're gonna do it in a crisscross pattern after we take the whole thing back apart because I forgot a spring so looks like that bad boys coming back apart hey don't forget your spring all right, let's slide this back off now. See how well coated it is. We're just missing the spring. Looks like it matters which way it goes there. Mm -hmm. Let's try it all again. All right, now we got the spring on the end. Try and slide it back in here. There we go. There is a gap here, but I think we're just trying to overcome the spring pressure. Uh, so as I tighten these bolts here, there's the four there, uh, I'm gonna pay attention, make sure we're not hitting a hard stop, make sure it is just the spring there. So let's get to tightening. see that gap has completely tightened up there um, these are just just not that tight at all uh, just when I started feeling resistance on the wrench I stopped so uh, now I'm gonna and I, I kind of did them across there a little bit with it so but I haven't really put the pressure on it so now we're gonna add the torque wrench to it uh, possibly we'll see I might have a little bit to go but now we're gonna try and torque these they go to 17 and a half pounds and we're gonna do a crisscross so we'll do this top one first here then we'll do the bottom on the opposite side, which will be the bottom bolt here. And then we'll come up back to this one up here, not back, but we'll come to this one. And then we'll do the bottom corner uh, on the other side. So we're kind of crisscrossing as much as... All right, I've got you set up the best I can here. We're going to put this boot back on. If you can see in there, everything is lubed. It's in place. Uh, everything looks good. So I'm going to use a little bit of Vaseline on this boot. It is very dried out. Uh, I'm not taking the whole swing arm off to replace it or anything. So I'm just going to take a little bit of Vaseline. 
and put it on the lip. And it's just real light. Just to kind of help this thing slide over. That helped a lot until it didn't. <clears throat> go and got started hopefully pop in all the way around all right well pushing that top on just force the rest of it on all right before we put a wheel back on we need to get some molly on these gears here uh on these feet on that gear whatever you want to call it so i'm gonna put a little on here and then we'll do the old toothbrush thing I'm gonna take the same toothbrush and just kind of work some in around the edge here. It's still got quite a bit on it, so that's where the two of them are gonna meet, but it is. The other side's coated pretty good, but you know, why waste the grease, right? I like to use Bel Ray waterproof grease. And I'm gonna put it around the bearing here and just kind of mush it in a little bit, and then we're gonna put it inside there too. Flip it around. And do the same thing here. All right. I believe. Well, we're gonna spray some lithium grease on the other side. Uh, just kind of lightly around here first. None of that really turns or anything, but I like to have it just a little extra on there. Again, there were some on there when I took it off, so. All right, next thing we need to do is, this is the spacer that slides in the final drive. Uh, so we're gonna add a little bit of lube to it uh, around the edges on both sides, because uh, that's where there's some contact with it. And then we're gonna put just a little bit of grease inside the axle, we'll have grease on it, so that'll take care of that. Got our brakes here. It sprayed off really well with the uh, brake cleaner. Uh, and it's ready to slide on. So, pretty much only one way it can go. Slide on like that, and it'll, it can rotate on there to whatever position you need it at. But it's gonna go mostly like that, if I remember correctly, but doesn't really matter. All right, let's try and line it up. It's in the head. Rotate it a little bit, and in it goes. All right, axle's gonna slide in from here. Uh, the muffler is still loose. We've got enough room here to get our spacer in. Line that up. Pull the wheel a little bit, because I've still got it lined up with my flat jack. Slide that in. See if we can get lucky enough that it goes right through. Maybe. Brass hammer. You could also use like a piece of wood and put it between there. Just so you can don't hit it with a regular hammer. Yeah, and I use a brass hammer. Our axle's all the way in. Got our axle nut, a cotter pin. We are gonna trash that and put a new cotter pin in. Spacer goes on first. And then we've got some wiggle room on that muffler. We just thread the castle nut on. Alright. Well, we've got this on here. Next thing we're going to do is get our brake rod on there. So we've got our hardware here. We will need to replace that cotter pin. Bolt through the back side into the brake rod and tighten it down. Not ready to tighten that all the way yet. Again, you put the brake rod on. I say, let's get 
put the slide in there. Put it in there. And I can actually see where the other one was. But I'll adjust this later anyways. So that's about correct. You can actually see the mark that we made before. The rear brake will need to be adjusted. We'll need to tighten this, get a new cotter pit in. But that is all set. Next, we can put our shocks on. I've cleaned the axle nut up, and I've got it on there hand tightened. Uh, I have my torque wrench, and this is 80 foot-pounds. So we're going to get our torque wrench on here. And then, when you turn this, the other axle, the other side of the axle is going to... Uh, get grease all over you. So let me wipe that off. All right, so when you, as you're doing this, you're turning the whole axle. So what you'll need, is, what I do is I put a 17 millimeter on here, on Titan, and then we'll start doing this. There we go. That's our 80 foot pounds, and our hole is lined up for the cotter pin. We got our new cotter pin. Like I said, that lined up pretty well, and that's gonna stop it, so we'll bend that. I'm hitting the exhaust, so I'm gonna throw a rag on there just so I don't mess it up. In case I slip and bang it. All right, we're back to the it's called the torque link rod. I call it the bright stay rod, but whatever. Uh, this is 22 foot pounds and that's a 14 millimeter. Um, probably. Mm. Oh, it's gonna hit it. There we go. And then there's a hole in there. And I was gonna replace this cotter pin, but I decided uh, that I don't have any more and it's just a little surface rust on it. So uh, I didn't wanna take time to clean it up that direction from the front to the back and there we have it I haven't moved it at all hopefully Line up one, the other one lines up. Flat washer or split washer. Oh, they're not. Those are 17s, I believe. Again, 22. Not what I want to see. We'll take that off and reposition it. That washer has a big eye on it and it's not perfectly straight either. It's gonna work, but uh, so when I did it, it was off centered. So now I'm gonna flip it over the other direction. Uh, again, you kind of see where it's wallet at. I don't think that's the original one, but that's fine. Uh, it'll work. Yeah, it's gonna work better. What we do is gonna center that washer first. Again, 22 foot pounds. All right, next I'm gonna clean up this bracket, uh, which I'm not gonna video that, but I'm gonna clean up this bracket and then I'll do the bolts on the final drive. Um, just the heads on those, uh, just gonna wire wheel them, uh, trying to 
clean them up just a little bit so they look better, especially since outside's painted. And again, do the same thing with this bracket and then we'll be ready to put it back together. The drain bolt on the final drive is 14 and a half pounds, 14 pounds. I don't remember, I think it's 14 and a half. Uh, 12 millimeter, we've already got it hand tight. Well, I thought it did. There we go, that's all it takes for that. And then we're gonna add gear oil. I just have some big box store, the blue place, uh, oil that I had, it's a 7590. Uh, and basically we're just gonna try and see if we can just add it in. Basically what we're gonna do is just fill this until it starts to come out. And then we're done. And hope it doesn't come out anywhere else. All right, I raised it back up a little bit. Because, spin that wheel just a little bit. Exhaust definitely makes it troublesome. If you don't have a good bottle like this, you can use a hose or something to squeeze it through. Kind of difficult, but you can see we've got oil running out here already, and then down inside there. See if we can get that. You can see the oil down there. So now we put the cap back on. There's no torque spec for this, so we're just going to snug it down. Made contact, gave it just a little bit extra, and we are good to go. All right, we're gonna put the exhaust back bracket back on. Folks, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed the series along the way and hopefully you learned a little bit of something and it helps you out if you're doing this process with it. Uh, it is not that hard of a process. Just follow the steps with it. Um, again, you can go to the VN 750 forum. Um, they've got a good write up with it. And uh, if you've got any questions at all for me, let me know down in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed all this, please consider hitting the like button on there and subscribing if you want to see some more content like that. So uh, again, thanks for watching.